So much of what we've covered in our crokinole tips up until now has been all about singles crokinole, 1v1, head-to-head -head crokinole. Today, we are going to branch into the world of doubles crokinole. That's when you play in teams, sit across from your partner and your opponent sit to your left and to your right. And specifically, we are going to look at a shot that is called the assist. We are going to look at how to execute the assist. We are going to look at when to execute the assist. And we are going to take a very close look at what to watch out for if you want to use the assist. Because this is something that can absolutely backfire on you if you don't know what to watch for. And although this is a strategy that gets used a lot in competitive crokinole, it is absolutely something that you can use to add to the fun and the chaos that comes during beginner crokinole. Let's take a look. Jeremy Tracy here of Tracy Boards. Please go ahead and... This is yet another tip that absolutely flies in the face of what you think you should do in order to win at Crokinole. Depending on what other sport you watch other than Crokinole, you may be more familiar with calling this a helper, or a layup, or an alley-oop, or an an app? Seriously, an apple? Who in the right mind would call it an apple? Regardless of what you want to call it, in competitive crokinole, this is something that generally gets used when a team is down in 20s and desperate to get back in the round. But that said, it can also be used in more beginner or intermediate level of crokinole to just add to the chaos and the fun that so often happens within those pegs. And this is when the situation sets up, when it's your turn and you've got an opponent's disc, disc somewhere on your side of the board. Rather than knock it off, what you're going to want to do is you use their button to assist or set up your partner for when their turn comes. And instead of knocking it off, you take that disc and knock it in toward the center hole. It's much like the bump and run, but with the bump and run, you're bumping your own button and trying to get it into the center. In this case, you're bumping your opponent's button and you want to get it close to, but not into the center hole. The assist is not easy to do, but when you can successfully pull it off, it is super satisfying. Your partner will then get a 20 and probably give you a high five. Yes! And who doesn't like a high five? Now this sounds like a great idea, but there are definitely some downsides that you need to watch out for. The first one is fairly obvious, that there is absolutely the potential that you will knock your opponent's button all the way into the center instead of just close to it, at which point your opponents may give you a high five. High five! <laughs> What is less obvious is that there is absolutely a potential that you could be setting your opponent up for them to score 20 for themselves. Now, when you are playing doubles, play goes around the table, so the person who is sitting to your left is going to shoot after you, and you need to be aware of what opportunities that you are going to leave them with. One example would be if you were to use this assist concept with play on the left hand side, and let's say you bump that opponent's button up, do a beautiful assist, your partner is set up really well, but your opponent who shoots immediately after you is a super savvy crokinoler who has devoured all of our videos and is very in tune with the Rick O'Shea shot. They combine the ricochet shot with a bump and run. They're able to go off of yours and then bump their own into the center. Absolutely a doable shot in the exact opposite outcome of what you're looking for. At the same time, what can happen on the right hand side of the board, even if you successfully set your partner up and you bump in, get this nice and close, at that point, the person to your left has the opportunity to come down this line, hit their own, drop a 20, and have that button continue on to hit yours. It's still a valid shot. They get a 20. Again, you've got the exact opposite outcome of what you were looking for. So you need to ask yourself, what opportunities are you leaving them with? And it isn't necessarily just where you're leaving your shooter, but to be aware of what other buttons of yours are 
elsewhere on the board that they might be able to use to take advantage of whatever you set them up with on that board. Now, full disclosure, there is absolutely nothing about this tip that I am prepared to make any sort of guarantee that you will be successful in winning the round. In fact, there are times when I go for a shot like this and after I've made the shot, I literally say out loud, you know what, one of two things is gonna happen. Either I'm gonna win this round or I'm gonna get to see an amazingly creative crokinole shot. Now I prefer to win, but as a backup plan, I really enjoy seeing fun and dynamic shots on the board. Now on the flip side of this, let's say your opponents have watched this video, so they either intentionally or accidentally create an assist situation on the board. As a crokinole or playing doubles, it is your job to one, make sure that your opponent to the left that you're not setting them up, but two, you wanna make sure you take away any opportunities from them that you possibly can. So if your opponent sitting to your right successfully does an amazing assist and you're looking at the board, what I want you to ask yourself is what can I possibly do to disrupt that beautiful setup his or her partner has left on the table? Is there anything that you can carry them off to ricochet off of to get a 20 for yourself? Now there are some players that are so determined to take away a sure 20 from their opponent that they will intentionally make an invalid shot hitting their own disc then losing their shooter as well as the one they've made contact with rather than leave their opponent with a good setup. Now that is not a recommendation. I can tell you that personally I feel that that is childish and spiteful and it is something that I would almost always sometimes never not do, depending on the situation. So the absolutely perfect assist is when you are able to successfully set your partner up as well as do it in such a way that your opponent does not possibly have an opportunity to disrupt that assist and make a valid shot at the same time. So as you move forward in your crokinole career, if you ever find yourself down and around that you're desperate to get back into, or you just wanna create more chaos and fun inside of that middle circle, then the assist is absolutely a shot that I'd encourage you to add to your arsenal. Most importantly, we really hope that this assist video will assist you in enjoying the greatest game on earth. <clears throat> wow, I ate a lot of that peanut butter. Self five. Stop it. Stop laughing at me. <clears throat>